This is Libby, Montana, the city of Eagles, famous for, well, not much according to former Montana Senator Max Baucus. Most Montanans don't know much about Libby. Most Montanans never been there. But there is one distinguishing feature of Libby, Montana that you won't find on any welcome sign or brochure. It's the only town in America with Medicare for almost all. What does that even mean? Well, I went to Libby to find out how residents became eligible for Medicare regardless of their age, what impact government-provided healthcare coverage has had on the community, and what the rest of the country can learn from the town's experience with a single-payer healthcare system, or as close as anything we have to it in the U.S. So stick around. This is The Classroom for More Perfect Union. The single payer is not going to get even to first base. The year is 2009. The Affordable Care Act is being crafted, and Senator Max Baucus emerges as one of the chief opponents of a single payer Medicare for All system. Is okay. Senator Baucus open to your ideas? In, in, sir, he's not. To a single payer idea? Not in a million years. But behind the scenes, Senator Baucus was writing a provision into the signature health care law that would make one tiny town in Montana the only place in the United States where every person, regardless of age, is eligible for Medicare. So the Medicare has been a godsend for me. It's helped me tremendously. It's been the best thing to happen to Libby. And none of it should have happened. I mean, this is the thing. So they finally brought some justice to people of Libby. To understand why the town needed justice, I have to rewind a few more years and give you some backstory. Libby is the site of one of the worst man-made, corporate-perpetuated environmental disasters in American history. This is how the story goes. Libby was the site of a vermiculite mine. The extracted ore, sold under the brand name Zonalite, was used for all sorts of things. What wasn't widely known for the decades the mine was in operation was that, though vermiculite itself is harmless, it was contaminated with tremolite asbestos. It was later revealed that W.R. Grace, which owned and operated the mine for decades, knew about the danger to workers. It didn't happen to us, as anyone would like to say. It was done to us. That's Gayla Benefield. She's the Aaron Brockovich of Libby. And that's her daughter, Julie Johnson. Gayla wasn't feeling well while I was in town, so I caught up with her by phone. Julie called you the Aaron Brockovich of Libby, and that is the best. Yeah, she's taller. She's taller than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, the only way to describe it is, is, <laughs> it just pissed me off. <laughs> Gayla's father, a minor, died from lung disease. Her mother also died from lung disease. And Gayla won one of the first wrongful death suits against Grace over her mother's death. Grace had bought the company. They bought the company with people knowing they had lung problems. They gave them chest x-rays every year to watch their lung capacity go down here to see how long they could actually work a man up there before it showed and how long before he died. So the company knew about asbestos exposure, was monitoring the damage on workers, and instead of telling people, they just tried to figure out how much work they could take out of a man before he died. W.R. Grace closed the mine in 1990. The W.R. Grace Company had a volunteer medical program, but they had a bar of getting access to care that was quite high. That's Dr. Brad Black. He helped lead the Center for Asbestos-Related Disease Clinic in town, which screens and monitors community members for, as the name suggests, asbestos-related diseases. And so a lot of people that were having significant health problems from their exposure weren't getting on the health plan. And then they turned around within two years and went bankrupt on us, and uh, we were left holding the bag. I think Senator Bacchus understood that before long, they're, they're going to pull everything. There won't be anything for anybody. And that brings us back to 2009. Now is the time to deliver on health care. As senator from Montana, Baucus was aware of Libby's issues. And as chair of the Senate Committee on Finance, he had the means to do something about it. And that's where Section 10323 of the Affordable Care Act was created. It is one of those instances where you just, man, oh man, it's, 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 just, it's clear what had to be done. You just do it. You don't worry about bureaucracy. You don't worry about cost-effective analysis. You just do it because otherwise people are going to die. Section 10323 basically gives people in Libby and the surrounding area benefits that nobody else in the country has. For one, it opens up Medicare access for those affected by the asbestos exposure, regardless of their age. And that can be a life changer for people like Julie. Julie was 46 when she was diagnosed with asbestos-related disease. She's been on Medicare through the Libby exception for about 10 years now. I had no insurance at the time. Yeah, when I got diagnosed, the only good outcome of it was, yes, I did get on Medicare. I was uh, diagnosed with fibromyalgia in 
probably 2003, 2004, so I had no insurance to pay for any medications with it. Once I was able to get on Medicare, I was able to get the treatment that I needed. I was able to go to the doctors and find out what's the best treatment to deal with the fibromyalgia. So the Medicare um, has been a godsend for me. Libby has a current population of 2,775. The card clinic says that between 2011 and August 2021, they had identified 2,281 people in the area under the age of 65 who qualified for Medicare assistance. So because of these provisions, thousands of people in Libby have benefited. And reporting from the time makes it seem like a seamless process, despite what critics of Medicare for All would have you believe about inefficient government bureaucracy. An official from the Social Security Administration set up shop around the county and saw 60 people in Libby on their first day in town. A little over a year later, about 600 people had been signed up. Yeah, it was really simple to get on Medicare. Uh, once you go down to the card clinic, they diagnose you. I just had to like fill out paperwork. I believe probably got online and was able to get right on the Medicare. The system isn't perfect, of course, but the interesting thing was that the part people had the most trouble with was the private insurance aspect. Because for the majority of people, the benefits only pay for Medicare Part A coverage. That's usually stuff like hospital treatments or hospice care. That means other important health factors like doctor's visits or prescription drugs go uncovered unless people buy supplemental insurance, and that can add up. Do you have supplemental insurance? In, uh... Yes. Oh, yes. I've got. Yeah, I've got Medicare Advantage. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that's private. Uh, you pay. Huh? You pay for that, right? Oh, through the nose. Yeah, through the nose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That came through my husband's union insurance. It originally started out free, and it's gone up to three hundred dollars a month. Because I have Part B that is one hundred and seventy a month, and then I pay for Part G, which is one hundred and seventeen something a month, to pay for what A and B don't pay for. That's Linda Rodriguez. She was diagnosed with asbestos-related disease about two years ago. I caught up with her at the Libby Library while she was running errands in town. Because $300 a month out of your Social Security is a lot, especially when you have all your regular bills that you have coming in. And oh, you can get a, you can get a Humana for $30, $40 a month, but what's it gonna cover? On top of that, coverage is only provided to those actually diagnosed with asbestos-related disease, regardless of how long they might have been exposed a particular problem for a disease that could take decades to come to full force. But it seems like the people I did talk to like the system and are benefiting from the provisions, but maybe feel like it doesn't go far enough? There's still a costly private insurance component that many still have to deal with. Which reminded me of something Senator Baucus said in our conversation. You don't worry about bureaucracy, you don't worry about cost-effective analysis, you just do it because otherwise people are gonna die. I mean, that makes sense to me, but I wonder why that can't apply to communities outside of Libby, too. So I asked Gayla and Julie and Linda about that. Our health care is sad compared to other countries. They should take care of more people. I think Medicare should be for everybody, actually, not just people that are disabled or hit 65 or 62. We should have really good health care in the United States, and we don't. So. Uh, seriously, I believe in socialized medicine. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, that's, you don't have to apologize. I believe it, too. <laughs> well, I really do, and I think that's what some people are trying to say. Senator Baucus has since come around to the idea of Medicare for All. And um, I, I do think that over time, we, if not Medicare for All, we will, we will as a country, um, move towards some kind of universal coverage. Um, every other developed country has it, has, has universal coverage, but it's going to take time. It's going to take a long time. It's, and frankly, it's taking longer than I expected. If we could guarantee healthcare to every resident of Libby dealing with a lethal environmental disaster, why can't the richest nation in the world do the same for every single person in this country dealing with a deadly pandemic on a daily basis? Gayla kind of said it better than I could. I mean, right now, the few that have insurance are just hanging on by a thread, and the ones that don't hope they don't get sick. Or they're lucky enough to get diagnosed with asbestos-related disease, so they're eligible for Medicare. Now, that's a bullshit deal, but that's basically the way the, the logic is here right now. Thank you for joining us in The Classroom, a series by More Perfect Union. We're taking on right-wing propaganda and telling the stories that corporate-backed media ignores, while seeking out solutions for a better future for all Americans. So join us. Like and subscribe.